All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about. We did talk about WWE NXT review, so make sure you check that out on YouTube. We also talked about our AEW Dynamite preview. And now we're going to jump on into what happened on WWE NXT. Ava granted Cody Rhodes the right to tell Trick Williams, the NXT World Heavyweight Championship champion ship holder, that you will fight in a 25-man battle royal next week. Uh, know that he won't. He's going to fight the winner of the you know the battle royal. I think this battle royal is going to be great. Definitely think 110. percent It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Definitely going to be pretty awesome. But before I do anything, you guys, I want to remind you guys to use the tips and donations link in the GSMC podcast. Uh, Naturally, me your questions, comments, and concern. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Once again, it really does help the GSMC Sports Network. A little peace, love, and positivity all the way, 1,010%. Does everybody good. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. So, of course, something that Cody Rhodes told Trick Williams that there is going to be kind of like a surprise element to it kind of you know more or less a chance for the forbidden door to be open you know from different different locker rooms not just nxt tna i do have speculations from superstars coming from raw or smackdown because you know that forbidden door from smackdown and raw to nxt is a, a, a swinging door policy but now you kind of have, you know, the whole TNA thing teaming, you know, kind of teaming with NXT to kind of put on a really good product. So let's go ahead and dig on into it. The first guy I got here is Mustafa Ali. Obviously, you've seen him in WWE before. He tried so hard to kind of become a singles wrestler after they kind of, you know, they kind of boned him, man. They kind of, you know, they kind of did him dirty. They took away the title. They got rid of 205 Live and they're like, hey, guys. All you guys, you know, good luck. Good luck trying to fend for yourself in the WWE where you kind of have these, you know, six foot six kind of steroided guys, like just absolutely ready to kick your ass. Like, and you know, that kind of hurt. That kind of sucked. So uh, Mustafa Ali could possibly be the one to fight Trick Williams. Um, you know, if I kind of had to put a label on it, but, you know, not too sure. Next, we have Sean Spears. Sean Spears, once again, could very much, um, could very much be a challenger, but... Oh, my God. I think he deserves a challenge. I think he will beat. I think he'll win. Honestly, he's probably in my top two, top three to win the Battle Royal. Obviously, what WWE kind of wanted to show WWE, the NXT audience, that uh, this is kind of going to be like a Royal Rumble. You're going to have a lot of shocking returns. You're going to have a lot of people that you didn't expect, like Jordan Grace did on the Women's Royal Rumble in 2024. You're going to have a lot of surprise appearances. So Sean Spears, you know, I, I like him. Definitely think he could be a champion. So, you know, I'm going to say this guy's going to be a good challenger. He's going to be a good challenger. All right, next we have Javon Evans. I love Javon Evans, but as of right now, only because of his character development, I think he's kind of a pretender right now. Pretender for now. Pretender for now. Because he's he's so good. He's so good. But he's so very young. He has a lot to learn within the professional wrestling industry. Obviously, you've seen him kill it all over the WWE so far. He's helped Trick Williams, you know, kind of defend himself against Gallus. But honestly, I don't see Javon Evans winning this match because I feel like... WWE NXT kind of had Cody Rhodes go out there and tell Trick Williams that it's from different locker rooms for a reason. So that's the shock. That's the surprising aspect that I kind of got from it. Next, we had the broken Matt Hardy. Could very much be a guy obviously very, very familiar with WWE. He was going to sign with WWE, but he did not. He signed with TNA. Maybe could have left it like be like he talked to Triple H and he was like, look, pretty soon we're going to be having some promotions with, uh, you know, TNA. So make sure uh, you kind of head over there and uh, so we can get this thing uh going you know wwe like the back of your head like you know, i know that's sorry that's my paula back boys hope you like it <laughs> but but um matt hardy would be good i feel like matt hardy would be pretty awesome to kind of fight trick williams that would be a shocker within it itself also jeff hardy we got to talk about the other hardy brother jeff hardy would be pretty crazy to kind of fight and kind of win that 25 man over the top row battle royal for a chance to fight trick williams to fight trick williams at a at not AEW, at wwe nxt uh heat wave um his aew's contract is up he needs a place to go it's been speculated that he's been rumored to kind of been flirting a little bit, flirting with WWE. He's the Liv Morgan 
and uh, WWE's Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, moving on, we got Ricochet. I know you saw Ricochet get injured. Obviously, I feel like that was a ploy to kind of keep the media, to kind of keep wrestling writers kind of distracted, kind of keep them like in the, you know, kind of like in the docks a little bit while they try to figure out a contract that suits WWE and that suits Ricochet. Because honestly, as a wrestling fan, as a WWE fan, primarily, I love Ricochet and I would love for him to come back to WWE. But as a Ricochet fan, I'm like, dude, screw WWE. WWE from the get-go kind of did you dirty, kind of didn't use you to your full potential. Assumingly, you were doing really, really well at a different wrestling promotion. And at a time that WWE absolutely was the juggernaut monopoly that it is, well, that it was, they're like, you know what? I want to take this. I'm going to take Ricochet away from these guys and, you know, kind of, you know, put them in middle bookings. And yeah, hey, you know, stick it to you. I kind of compared it to, you know, obviously you had kids. I kind of compared Ricochet to like a toy that like, you know, once when you have it, you don't, you know, the person who, you know, you just get jealous because the other person has it. And when you do have it, you don't utilize it or play with it the right way. You know, not trying to sound weird or anything like that. But uh, no, like a thousand and ten percent, I think Ricochet deserved better in WWE. And I kind of, for Ricochet's development, and with the whole Samantha Irving thing, leaving with her in the ambulance left so many different conspiracy theories open. But I like it. I like it. This is wrestling. This is some good old-fashioned wrestling. All right, next we have Eric Young. Eric Young used to fight in WWE, obviously. He went from TNA to WWE back to TNA. This guy loves TNA to death, man. I did a, you know, we did a segment about him, you know, a couple of uh, a couple of shows ago. And something that I admired him, admired from him a thousand and ten percent was his ability to be like, look, I've been all over the place. I've been all over professional wrestling. I've been, you know, to the major leagues, WWE, you know, of course, and you know, and suspect. But um, honestly, where my heart lies is truly in TNA. TNA, you know, they obviously, I feel like TNA does kind of use their creative aspects a little better than WWE. But that could be because WWE has such a huge main roster. And TNA probably has, I would say, maybe half that, half that. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's, it's just a huge, you know, kind of bottleneck. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of people want to become the best person. But honestly, Eric Young kind of came in there. I, I don't think he's much of a challenger. I think he's more of a more of a pretender. All right. And this man right here, Joe Henry, is this guy looks like a WWE superstar right off the bat. I honestly do 110% think that this guy looks like a WWE superstar. Uh, why they haven't brought him to WWE from TNA is beyond me. But I think uh, Joe Henry is a challenger. I definitely think it would be a great match between him and uh, a Trick Williams. Next, we have Cody Rhodes. I know a lot of you guys are kind of telling Eric, hey, man, what are you smoking over there, bro? You got some peyote. You got some good old, you know, got some good cushion. Like, no, no. He was like, you know what? I am going to be at the barbecue. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, and he said it with like such enthusiasm. And as soon as he wins at Clash of the Castle, and then he's, you know, if he shows up to fight Trick Williams, because I don't think he's never been NXT champion. To be like, hey, I never became WWE NXT champion. <laughs> like, you don't like I can see that kind of happen. Like, just how Cody is, just for his fighting spirit. I definitely think Cody Rhodes kind of said that, maybe like a foreshadow, you know, kind of thing. Kind of like, you know, that little dealio. So I don't know about that, but, you know, speculations. That's what we're here for. We're here to speculate. Next, I have Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth making his way back to the WWE. Kind of a little slim, kind of a little slim to be honest. And because Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth was done so dirty within WWE, he was to a point where like they were kind of like toying with his character, kind of playing with his creative ideas. And you know, with his brother Ryan with the new organization in TNA, if TNA and WWE are looking to have more, you know, opportunities with each other heading forward, yeah, I can see this happening. But, um, you know, kind of just like a, you know, like a nice little smooch and goodbye. I don't know. I don't really see it kind of happening. Kind of like what you saw with, uh, you know, Jordan Grace being defeated by Roxanne Perez. 
Jordan Grace was kind of mentioned, but if it was like a regular wrestling promo where you had a partnership with the other promotion, you would have essentially Jordan Grace come out and like just talk absolute mess. But like if it wasn't for Ash by Elegance or if it wasn't for Tatum Paxley, I would be the WWE NXT World Women's Champion along with the TNA Knockouts Champion. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So, you know, that kind of gets me thinking that, like, WWE might be flirting with that, with this idea, but I don't think they're 110% serious. Not just yet. Next, we have Ethan Page. Ethan Page lost his match to uh, Trick Williams. He got a little cocky, a little all-ego, presumably kind of setting up a match maybe in the future that maybe Ethan Page does knock off the NXT World Champion. But with this Battle Royal, I don't see it happening because, like, once when I, you know, if... You know, Ethan Page, he was in AEW. And then he made it to WWE NXT. And that promo last week kind of left him within the locker room, kind of assimilated himself within the WWE network or WWE promotion. And I feel like the way Avon, the way Shawn Michaels, and the way Cody Rhodes kind of set it up, different locker rooms. They want there has to be a shocking factor. There has to be something crazy going forward. So if Ethan Page wins again, and he's going to fight Trick Williams, I wouldn't be that shocked, you know, because Ethan Page is an amazing competitor. And I feel like they do in the future need a rematch, but it's not that shocking, if that makes any sense. Uh, so, you know, moving on. Uh, we have Lexus King. Don't really have to talk much about this guy. I don't think he's going to go anywhere near Trick Williams' championship. Maybe because, you know, he's kind of the heel Obviously, the kind of guys I spoke about before, I had valid reasons of why they should win. I have a valid reason why this guy should not win. If this guy comes anywhere near the NXT World Championship, I'm going to shoot my... I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, um, I'm not dogging on Lexus King. This guy's been with the... Um, you know, he's been with professional wrestling. He was a former AEW superstar. You saw uh, Sean Spears. You saw Ethan Page. And you saw Lexus King confront Cody Rhodes on WWE NXT last night. And Cody told me, he's like, hey, guys, you're in a good spot. You're in the right place. You know, obviously, Cody Rhodes did leave AEW for personal reasons. Um, he said it was for, they, I, I feel like it was, they disrespected him in some way, but he hasn't really kind of opened up to the press about it, which is cool, which is cool. But Lexus King, you know, I think he's a pretender. All right, and lastly, we're going to talk about Chris Saban. Chris Saban has been with TNA for such a longest time, much like Jordan Grace did with the WWE. You kind of offer those uh, who have a little experience inside of the ring so you don't really, you know, chance hurting the other superstars on the other promotion. So, you know, obviously Chris Saban, wherever he goes, whenever he fights a prominent X Division champion, prominent TNA champion, you know, valid guy, I feel like he could, you know, push Trick Williams to the limit, and it would be an absolute surprising uh, wide open door. So, you know, I definitely think that's, uh, you know, that's kind of like a win win for TNA and WWE. So, um, yeah. Well, guys, hope you guys like that segment. We're going to jump right into our segment four. We're going to get into our um, dum da da da. Dum dum. WWE Monday Night Raw ratings decrease. We're going to get into that after this quick commercial break. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, as always, every Monday through Friday night. Just kind of reiterate what we talked about with our WWE NXT review, our AEW Dynamite preview. We talked about the 25-man battle royal to determine the number one contendership for Trick Williams' NXT World Heavyweight Championship uh, next week on NXT. Now we're going to jump right into our fourth segment. We're going to talk about how... Oh, excuse me. Recent Monday Night Raw viewership has been decreasing. Definitely something that uh, I kind of thought about and kind of wanted to expunge a little bit. But, uh, you know, here we go. So WWE Monday Night Raw ratings have been decreasing for the second week in a row. For the second week in a row. Like, it's so bad. Uh, Raw is, um, honestly, I Raw is a three-hour show. That's a long time. That's a lot of television time. That's a lot of promotions. That's a lot of bookings. That's a lot of responsibility for spotters to be like, all right, I feel like this would be great. And it's just so hard. So the attention, you know, the attention span of people are absolutely decreasing by the milliseconds. Um, so, you know, they have to be ready. WWE fans in the WWE universe and professional wrestling fans have to be ready for this long show this three-hour extravaganza that is monday night bro 
uh, June 10th, uh, Drew, which was Monday, drew about 1,609,000 viewers. Uh, the previous week, audience was at uh, 1,679,000 viewers, which isn't that bad. That's still very, very high within wrestling promotions. I feel like that kind of doubles, triples TNA, Ring of Honor, and all that. Um, so I know it's kind of crazy that 18 years to 49 demographic is obviously very important because they say the average WWE fan is about 37 years old. So it's big. It's big, 110%. Obviously, you have people watching the WWE in the UK, in Saudi Arabia, in Germany, in Russia, all over the globe. They're live in like over 180 countries. So it, it's kind of fitting that they're, you know, the kind of age range, um, you know, from 18 years to 49. Uh, perhaps after the clash, clash of the castle, there will be more storylines, and that's a thousand and ten percent uh, correct. I definitely think that's going to happen. Uh, as soon as WrestleMania kind of ended, which kind of made me kind of want to jump on into, you know, we're going to talk about that a little later. But, uh, you know, you know, we kind of have Uncle Howdy on tap right now. He set the debut according to his QR coded videos, June 17, 2024. And I feel like they're going to have a dominant stable. Obviously, they're going to come with uh, like four, four guys, Nikki Cross. And, of course, it's probably going to be still building. It's going to be building 1,010%. So I think Monday Night Raw is in a good place right now, although they did lose about um, uh, 75%. No, they lost like 75,000 of viewers, which, you know, isn't totally terrible. But, um, you know, obviously, you know, they're going to pay attention to it. The media, like me, is going to pay attention to it. And kind of dig, you know, try to find out the huge reason here. And like I said, Uncle Howdy's right on top. Should be pretty awesome. It's injuries. It's injuries. As soon as WrestleMania ended and then uh, the the WWE draft started, I feel like WWE was kind of like, uh, like, what, what can I do? Like, what can I do? CM Punk was injured. Seth Rollins was injured. Drew McIntyre had recently been cleared from injury. Ricochet and Chad Gable contracts were uncertain. They're, they're, they're up. They're up, so you got to decide what you got to do with theirs. So if you're a WWE creative, you know, officer or a creative, like, you know, consultant, you're not putting these guys on the books. You're not really thinking so thoroughly into their uh, their character or the bookings because you don't know what the hell is going to happen with these guys. You don't know if WWE is going to move on from these guys. And now you kind of have Ricochet gone. Ricochet was speared through, you know, uh, uh, a windshield on WWE Monday Night Raw, which I kind of thought that promo was trash. But uh, obviously, you guys might have different opinions about it. And then also from the women's side, you had you, you had Becky gone. Becky's gone. She's a free agent. She let her contract go up. Uh, Oscar's injured from damage control. Uh, Liv Morgan, I feel like she panders to the crowd, much like I talked about in my last podcast. I feel like she's better of uh, the chaser than the champion because I feel like as soon as he's, she's the champion, it seems a little kind of dim there. Um but when she's trying to chase the championship, she's, you know, it, it's good media. It's good TV. And she doesn't even have a title match. Why doesn't she have a title match at Clash of the Castle? That Lyra Valkyria match on Monday Night Raw with the US guy should have been the number one contendership for her uh, for her championship match. But what is WWE doing here? Well, are you going to give us five or six matches because they know that they can or we're not going to go anywhere? I think that's stupid. I think that's absolutely garbage. And obviously the, you know, Lyra Valkyria during the time in the women's uh, Queen of the Ring, you know, matchups obviously took advantage of this. Not 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 willingly, but WWE was like, dude, we need a badass girl to kind of fill in the void here. Lyra Valkyria, we're going to bring her up from NXT. We're going to draft her. We're going to mold her into a champion, a future champion. And we're going to have her in the finals against Nia Jax. But obviously against Nia Jax, it's uh, kind of hard. So honestly, Lyra Valkyrie deserved all the flowers. She deserved that opportunity. She was probably in the women's locker room, probably the best fit to kind of do that. Uh, so one thing that I love about Raw, the Raw's Women Tag Team Championship division is kind of thriving right now. Of course, you have Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill kind of flirting from, uh, kind of floating from show to show. You also have on Monday Night Raw, Stark and Baszler, Fry and Don, Damage Control, and uh, uh, um, Tiana Chance and uh, Kaden Carter. And um, it's good. It's good in terms of the women's uh, world tag team titles. So I think that's pretty badass. And then Jay Uso also being set up. Ludwig Kaiser has been emerging as a WWE super, superstar, uh, stepping out of the shadow of uh, the ring general, Guther. And... Um, like I said before, one of the main things that I feel 
that Raw has been doing really, really wrong. And I keep reiterating about it over and over and over and over again. And it's been speculated that he's going to have new creative outlooks and new creative ideas is Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker was brought to W from WWE NXT to kind of be like a kind of like a heavyweight, but I feel like he's on the back burner for some strange reason. Some strange reason. Damian Priest going to feud with the Judgment Day eventually. Maybe Seth Rollins coming back. Maybe Drew McIntyre, CM Punk. Definitely after Clash of the Castle, I feel like a thousand and ten percent there will be some more a way to kind of better direct ideas and ideologies from uh you know from a standpoint of what's going to happen with WWE Monday Night Raw. You know, who knows? Who knows? Because for the longest time, WWE Raw was kind of like the it was the main thing. SmackDown was brought brought in probably like two or three third, or more than that. And so far, it seems like Monday Night Raw has kind of been, you know, dug under the radar. So want to bring Monday Night Raw back to life. Let me know in the comment section. Let me know in the chat. What do you think is best for Monday Night Raw? Well, guys, do not go anywhere. We're going to jump on into our last segment. We're going to talk about our Wednesday wrestling news. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 